I stood there and weak, I mean, almost passed out in despair, just crying my eyes out. My twin brother died due to suffocation. It was a miracle. Bottom line, I'm lucky to be alive. I'm thinking, what is it that I want to leave behind for my kids, my family, when essentially at that time I've got a 92% chance that I would not survive past six months. I, I pounded the steering wheel, cried and screamed in the car the entire way, wondering if maybe this will be the last day I ever saw my child, if I could even get to New York City in time to see him alive. My life quake happened very early on in life. And I lost my twin brother at the hands of my biological father. It shook me, but I never allowed that uh, to hinder me from moving forward. I was rushed to the hospital and unconscious uh, the rest of that day. My first memory was really being at home about a week later, trying to get my head around what had happened. I wouldn't change a thing, even though I went through a really, really, really difficult time, because it has made me who I am today. I mean, it's incredible how your life compresses into one sort of almost infinitesimally small moment in time where, um, I mean, it's strangely liberating in a way, because all your problems suddenly disappear when you're focused on this one thing. And for me, it, it was my son's cancer. Matter of fact, it pushed me to be um, an, a leader in the community, um, to play sports and just to be the best person that I could be. That's what my life quake did to me. My life quake enabled me to move forward and never stop. After that week in the hospital, I, I have no memory of my sudden cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest, uh, survival rates are about 3%. And I'm one of those 3%. We get a full MRI and it's revealed that I have stage four cancer and I'm given six months to live. I had tumors in my lungs, liver, spleen, stomach, in my adrenal glands. It was everywhere and tumors were getting big and it was not trending well. When then I reacted well to this immunotherapy drug over the course of the next six months, miraculously, I was cancer free. Um, I was a miracle, pretty much. I think we all have heroes, people we emulate in our lives, people that we want to try to become like. And I sat there next to my son in the ICU for seven months, and I saw him uh, whittle away and lose his hair and uh, go through chemo. And he did it with a level of bravery that uh, I can't comprehend. It wasn't until sitting next to my son that I realized the person I most wanted to emulate were my own kids. They were my, my wife Cheryl and how they were able to uh, approach this with calmness and bravery. Just keep on going and keep on pushing. I never give up because when you give up that means you have given the enemy the upper hand. You've allowed your circumstance to have power and victory over you. And I'm a firm believer in no excuses, just a success story. Because when you look around, everybody has been through some kind of a life quake and they've moved on. It's a miracle that I'm here. So now I'm left with the, now what? What am I going to do with this second chance? To give back, but we should all do that. We should all take opportunities be that person that is going to help somebody. You, you don't know the impact that you can make. And it helped me discover how to handle adversity and how to pick yourself up when you're down. It was a very, very challenging time for me because I started interviewing and I wasn't getting positions that I thought that I was deserving of. 
And I am telling you that was worse mentally for me by a factor of five over what it was like to be told that you've got cancer. A guy who's provided for his family and has been the breadwinner. Nobody saw value in me. And that frankly pissed me off. I decided that I was going to go into residential real estate. In my very first week of residential real estate, I had a tumor, so it is still in my body. So I immediately go back on treatment and have surgery. And I'm saying, you know what? I freaking don't care. I, I didn't care about the cancer part because that was not going to stop me. So I have three boys. So how I could be an example to them. And how Max went through this trial without batting an eye, without feeling sorry for himself, and making sure that the nurses and the, uh, the cleaning attendants and the registration people and the social worker, that everybody felt comfortable around him and that they actually were in a good mood when they showed up. Thank goodness my son is in remission and doing well. Always remember that you are something valuable. Whatever you're going through, you can still grow. There is always some sort of growing that you can do in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your problems, in the midst of getting over this life quick. Nobody's life is perfect. Regardless of how much money somebody has, regardless of um, how their family looks, everybody has gone through something traumatic. Everybody's going through some type of a life quake. You never get a diamond without going through some kind of fire. And just take this life quake as your fire helping you become that beautiful diamond. You know, it, it did change me as a person. Um, I do feel more present, more at peace. Don't take life for granted. Tell your loved ones you love them. Be empathetic. Um, I hug them tighter. I say I love you more often, but at the end of the day, um, I think the biggest reason that this happened to me is to continue being a, a, a better husband and father. Better family man. Um, when COVID hit, you know, my kids lost their jobs and came back. And Max one day was sitting on the back porch and um, he was looking in our house and looking at the stuff around him. And he says, Dad, I don't think I'm ever gonna be as successful as you. And I said, Max, don't you know that you're my masterpiece, my opus, my Mona Lisa? Don't you know that you're the pinnacle of my life and my most proud accomplishment in the world is you. This is all just stuff. It's just stuff. You know, we think we have problems in our lives and then out of the blue, we have a real problem. And then we realize we didn't have any problems at all. Take your life quick and make something great out of it. It can be taken away in a heartbeat. It, it can. So do something great with your life. Don't wait. You have unbelievable resolve to pick yourself up, to do whatever it takes. That has equipped me with some really significant life skills to prepare me for my next life quake because frankly, it's gonna happen and things are not always gonna go right. But now I know to be able to conquer that and then move on to the next challenge and get out of that situation. So thank you for listening.